Hey guys, it's Trish. Welcome back to my channel. Today um, we're going to be working on another design on the fly. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I did a video and it was with my Jesse James Beads Design Ambassador Kit for August and these were the earrings that we made in those videos so I will link that in the description. If you haven't seen that, check it out. And I was just thinking, boy, I, you know, there's so many more beautiful beads and I started laying things out and I thought, you know what? I'm going to film this because, you know, any kind of jewelry making can be a learning experience. So, and I do apologize if you hear my air conditioner running. I like to shut it off when I film, but it's in the 90s today, so that's just not an option. So I hope you can look past that. Uh, so basically what I have here is I've laid my beads out. This is going to be a strung necklace. I'm not sh exactly sure 100% where the direction is going to go, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I basically, you know, have these beads laid out, I have, and I also got these beautiful rose um, cages that have crystals inside, which you saw in the earrings as well, and I wanted to incorporate those into the necklace. They also had these, um, I think they're chandelier uh, pieces for earrings, but I want to use them as links into the next part of my necklace, whether that be sorry silk chain or whatever. I haven't decided but this is our basic that we're gonna go with so let's get started and see where this leads us and just kind of go from there play it by ear which I do need to grab oops um, some 19 strand because I that's what I'm gonna 19 strand of gold I'm going to put the the beads on now the other thing I want to do first is I want to hook in the jump rings into our cages so as I'm beading and I want to put and I'm going to actually you know what what I'm going to do I'm going to do my um, head pins first they're going to dangle off the bottom with the uh, accoutrements or whatever you call them <laughs> hanging on there and we're going to attach them to these cage beads so we're going to need to do that so when we string we can just put it on there's your rose all set so let's do that first and like I said with this being a design on the fly this isn't going to be so uniform as a lot of my videos as I try to make them anyway we're just going to kind of go with it so I'm grabbing three gold head pins these are two inch head pins and that out of the way and what I'm going to do is just string on and see here I want to hook my tassel to the bottom of my head to my pin so a um, head pin won't work so what I'm going to do because I want the golds to match I'm going to snip off the bottom of this head pin if I get strong head pin and I'm gonna grab my one step looper. If I can get all of my stuff out of the way here. And I wanna get my smaller one step looper. And I'm gonna put a loop on the end of this head pin to start with because I wanna be able to hook my tassel into it. So you can see how that works. You just put it through and it comes out the side just a little bit because we don't wanna take too much off of it. And then you squeeze. I push back just a hair offset it and there's your loop so I want to make sure that my loop is closed on my tassel I'm gonna hook it into that loop that we just made with our one step looper you can do wrap loops on this as well guys that's completely your choice I just find that you know the uh, one step looper makes it very very easy and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our pearl on and maybe just put a ron one of these beautiful rondelles on top of it like so. I'd like to put one on the bottom but I'm just afraid it's not going to sit right. Yeah, it's not. So let's just do what we're going to do here. Let's put our 
beautiful champagne colored pearl now this is the coral boho strand that i've kind of changed up a little bit and these beads as you see can see back here these are actually from the color trend mix the rose gold color trend mix okay and that's the same thing i used on the earring so as always there'll be an affiliate link in the description box if you'd like to go check those out so let's put our pearl back on here Whoop, whoop, yep. You'll find that sometimes my hands and my brain do not cooperate, so I appreciate your patience with that. And we're going to do the same thing. Just put it in there, give us a little um, loop, and then I'm going to open that loop and attach it to the bottom of my rose now, okay? going to hook that into one of the metal loop flourishes down there one of the loopy loops and close that all right oh yeah that's going to be really pretty a really pretty centerpiece and right now as we go i'm just going to take my gold jump rings out and i'm going to attach and the thing is with this strand it has rose gold and it has regular gold in it as well as this mix which makes it nice because if you don't have a bunch of rose gold, you can still use it and it coordinates. Okay, so we got our jump rings. All right. They're all tangled together, of course. Let me grab my chain nose plier. I have stuff everywhere because I already filmed five videos today, so this is number six so I'm trying to get myself figured out here and get the stuff out of the way I should have done that prior but no big deal so grab my chain nose we're just gonna open this up these are kind of stuck together so we'll take that one out and we're gonna hook it we can see where this is on the bottom so we want to put the jump ring basically right above where that is so it hangs nicely we're going to hook it into the bottom of the um cage bead which would be very nice so i'm gonna have to open another one because i dropped on the floor and i'm just not not dealing with it right now all right so we're hooking our jump ring in very simply done hold on to your jump ring tight hook it into your cage bead okay and then close your jump ring so now that's ready to string onto the piece all right very very pretty okay so next ones we're going to do these beautiful crystal drops and a rondelle on top of those or a yep you know rondelle crystal rondelle um but i think let's see what we got here left I think I want to put one of these pink on top these pink uh, rondelles on top because it'll kind of stabilize that so I'm going to do the same thing over here with this one and then we'll put them into the uh, one step looper and I like how it stabilizes the rondelle it kind of just sits nicer you could also have put like your gold on top of that that would have looked very pretty it's just however I'm always up for adding more pink into pieces so all right, so we're going to one step loop these. And this is the 1.5, if you haven't seen that. Um, this is the smallest, and I have the largest. The middle one, which is, I believe, 2.25, is a little harder to find. Um, <coughs> I know that Michaels and Hobby Lobby and, and those guys, they they don't carry the, the middle one. They only carry the largest and the smallest for some reason. I have no idea why. But I think the middle one would just be perfect for most things. Um, these work, and it's all in what you're looking for. Like, this is a dainty necklace, so I pulled out the smallest one to have, you know, smaller loops. Um, so that's ready. Let's hook this one on. So that makes it 
It makes it nice. Let's find our little hangy down part. We want to put this on. There we go. Alright, looking good. Uh, let's get our jump rings apart and hook those onto the other cage weeds and then we can start stringing. There's a method to my madness, I promise. <laughs> there isn't always, but... And hopefully, a lot of times I have a trouble stringing the um, cage weeds to get them to sit evenly. So I want to see how I... Where I hook that, right at the bottom of the crystal point. So that's what we're going to try to do here too. We'll see how it goes, but we may have to do some adjusting. And then we're just going to close our jump ring, put that back in. And same thing on this side. And always make sure, guys, I know I go over this a lot, but you always want to open front to back on your jump rings. Opening. In closing, always do that direction, back and forth, back and forth. Not huge movements, just little movements. But to pull them apart this way, you are going to destroy the look of your jump ring. So do not do that if you can help it. And I'm just holding this here. I'm just going to, again, find something, find the spot where it's, did I just fling another jump ring? <laughs> I think I did. <coughs> so let's get another one out. Oh my goodness. Hey, this is real life. This is real beating. It happens. These are little, and I think that's why I'm having a little bit of trouble with them. Because I'm not, I don't have as much dexterity as I once did, unfortunately. So, bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to hook that one in. So it's hanging basically whoop, from the, right above the, the loop and then into our cage bead. Sorry guys. Just trying to get that closed. There we go. Alright. So let's start stringing. This will be the easier part, right? I hope so anyway. So have some wire over here that's bouncing around <coughs> so basically I'm gonna string on my spool that's what I like to do um, I like to um, do that so I have less waste basically in essence so I'm just gonna start basic stringing I'm putting my beads on I love the way this looks it doesn't need anything extra as far as I'm concerned I think that it has enough metal in it to do the accenting for me and I think it'll be perfect the way it is if I can get the there we go and now comes the the trying or the cage bead that one seems pretty good let's keep going if we need to adjust where our um, Rose is hanging from. We can always do that down the, the road here. And that's all I am doing, guys. I'm just putting the beads, stringing them on simply onto the wire. Okay. I'm thinking I want to add some sari silk to this, or you could use fairy silk. Um, as the I've been using that a lot in my pieces as just to tie around the neck as a closure and I really like how feminine it is okay guys so I got that on just took me a minute and then we'll go to our cage bead here and see how well we can center this here Nope. Let's put it through that triangle. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad. 
And again, we're just stringing, 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 stringing in the thieves. And then we're going to, let's see here, put, yeah, that's our center. So what am I doing? What did I want to do? I wanted to put these on either side. So let me take this off and I want to put this bead on the other side after the boho and then put our cage bead back on so let's see okay and the bead and the boho hopefully this one goes right through and there we go that one worked well and then our bead caps. These are gorgeous rondelles, aren't they? Just beautiful faceted glass rondelles. <coughs> All right. And as you go, as you go here, guys, you can see how I'm just repeating the pattern, pattern, pat, you know, pattern. Patron. I don't know. That's another one of those words I can't say right. Pat patron. Patron. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. That's a, my husband always makes fun of me when I say certain words, and I didn't realize that was going to be one of them. But, and I can also see a problem right here. Not thinking, I put these um, smaller beads, and you can see how they're going inside the cage, and I don't like that. So we're going to change those out before we. We're going to take these beads off that we put on and we're going to change these smaller beads out and we're going to put some bigger, um, maybe we'll put our bicones. Well, no, that'll go. Let's do rundels because I know that that won't fit inside and it won't distort. Whoops. Sorry. I bumped the camera guys. Um, that won't distort how everything hangs then it'll keep. All right, so there. I'm gonna put our boho back on. And now it's probably gonna give me some trouble, but that's okay. There we go. Into the center. So back to this, be kept. I'm just doing this quickly because this is just a basic technique here, guys, which, you know, I'm sure you have a grasp on or can get a grasp on it very quickly. But let's see. So let's go from this triangle across to that triangle. And if you look at the, the cage bead, you can kind of tell how they're going to sit right on the wire. So... I'm happy with that so far. Really pretty. And next we have our champagne or um, taupe colored uh, boho with pearls. And this beautiful AB piece of glass. And this, one is, this looks like a natural stone to me. I'm not sure if it is, but it's very pretty. Has that look to it anyway. Okay. So, so far we have that part of our necklace strung. So what I'm going to do next, let me see how I want to, I might put a bicone on either end because I want to be able to kind of have that terminate with the link and I think that will make it flow if you can see that guys I don't know where it is oh there it is I think the bicone will make it flow into the links easier so we're gonna do that and did, did anybody else notice my mistake <laughs> yeah so I'll be right back I'll get this fixed and then we'll continue Okay guys, so we're back and that's all been 
ch changed and corrected. So after I, I restrung that, I grabbed myself some wire guardians because anytime I'm going to connect into metal, I like to use a water wire guardian because the, the beading wire is strong, but I just feel like metal to metal is a little better and will last longer as far as wear and tear goes. So if you want to use wire guardians, go for it. If you don't, of course, that's your prerogative. But And then I'll need myself some gold crimps. Grab those. Those are getting very low. I'm going to do a couple gold crimp beads. And I don't know. I'm just trying to think if I want to. Let me put my first guardian on first. Before I decide if I want to hook him with a jump ring. I don't know if I want to hook him directly. Let's see. So I put, I strung on my um, crimp tube. That's the number two crimp tube and my wire guardian and I just kind of want to see how the mechanics of this is going to work before I decide if I want to link in with a jump ring. I'm thinking I do only because of I don't want it to be too stiff of a piece and I'm afraid I don't know Let's, tr let's try it. I'm just going to slide this on and see what exactly it looks like before I make a decision. We're kind of auditioning. Huh? Actually, I think it will be all right because there's enough play in there. So good. So we have that piece on. Let me just make sure I have this where I want it. I believe so. <coughs> and then I'm going to see how that's hooked in there with the wire guardian into the link. And then I'm going to take the second wire and make sure it is through. Now this end it's easier because you're still on the strand. You don't have to worry about getting your tension just right. You're just putting in your first, putting on your first crimp. Let me grab my on terror crimpers here. Mm -mm -mm. Where are you? There they are. Okay. And I like these crimpers because you don't have to, I usually still do, but you don't have to have your wires lined up exactly on each side. So you don't have to worry about the crimp not working in general because it just works. I don't know how else to say it, but this is the Omterra crimper and I love it. So if you haven't gotten one of these, head over to Laura Gasparini's Etsy shop and grab one because they are fabulous guys okay so and you really with this one you only have to crimp it once but I do like you see how it makes it flat and it gives it that C shape but there's just something about it that makes it sturdy even if your your strands aren't lined up it's still extremely st sturdy and what I'm doing here is I'm just bending the crimp in half again because I like a more compact look and you could also put um, crimp cover on it, but see, that's that's all I did there. And now what I'm going to do is slide these beads back up because now, and I am one also, guys, that I just cut the string, the um, leftover wire because really, everybody I think likes to put the wire down through because they feel like it's more security, but it's really not. You already have your crimp on, and all this is going to do is sneak out and poke somebody in the neck. So I like to just. And I, I saw also Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. She does this. And you can always, I just try to cl cut as close as I can. I'm going to try to get it a little closer here. but um, And then you can always put a crimp cover on it or whatever. Okay? So perfect. So I'm going to slide my other beads up. And I'm going to have to snip this now, this other end, because it's on the roll. But now I can snip exactly what I need and not waste my beading wire. So I'm going to snip that. I'm going to wrap this back up so it does not get everywhere and come unwound and all that fun stuff. So there we go. 
and then I'm going to slide on my bicone like I did on the other end my crimp my wire guardian okay once that's on like so I'm going to string my link on like I did on the other side so and then this side is going to be the one whoops put it through the wrong wrong hole there we go this side is going to be the one that you have to concentrate on getting the the tension on your piece exactly how you want it so I'm going to take this end just like we did on the other side and I'm going to put that through my crimp tube like so and then what I'm going to do is kind of let this necklace settle All right, and I'm going to pull on the loose wire to get this where to where I want it here on the necklace I don't want it too tight I don't want it all crammed together because then you oh well something just fell from my <laughs> uh, some beads fell guys so that was all that was but you don't want it to be too snug you got to have just a little bit of give there just a little bit of room to groove there we go I'm just leaving myself the very uh, very tiny little area there that just to give it some breathing room okay and we will crimp it all right and then we're gonna go in and fold that over like I said before <coughs> I just think it looks nicer whoops if I can get my crimper there again guys my hands sometimes are not listening to my brain so there we go all right we got it and now I'm just gonna do the same thing um, I'm gonna cut that wire off right up to my crimp and we're good to go so that gives you you could just go from there and hook some chain on this and be done if you wanted to um, I think what I'm gonna do though is from these links I'm gonna do a couple wire links and hook that into some sari silk. I have some beautiful um, pink sari silk here I think I'm going to use. So let's do a few wire link. Let's do one wire link, a really nice one. And then let me see here. I'm going to get a strand of this off here. It's hard to find the end on these sometimes. So I just cut myself a piece of sorry silk there and let's do some wire links so what we're going to start with our wire links how we're going to start with that is we're going to do wrap loops on the a wrap loop on the end here so basically you know bend it over to an L shape guys and then put your run nose plier in up and over move your pliers to horizontal and then across then bring back back in either your chain nose or your tweezer pliers or your flat nose and then you're going to hold that snugly as you wrap that loop okay and just trim and then we're going to add our beads now what I'm going to do here when I finish this link this um, link I'm going to hook it right into my um, link here and then I'm going to have to put like a larger jump ring on this end to kind of run my sorry silk through to give it some room to groove 
Uh, so that's what we'll do with that. Now seeing what our remaining beads are. Let's see. Boy, I'm using all of these beads. There's, I think I used everything from my kit. I might not use that other tassel, but <laughs> let's see what we can do here with these links. So two bead caps there, and I believe those are for the larger ones. And we got two of those, two of those, two of those. No, we have three of those. Um, I don't know how that happened, but hmm, we've got these. So let's put the larger bead in the middle. And I love these. Yeah, I'm going to pass on the gold, I think. Let's do pearl, rondelle. And then the large bead in the center. And did I put the other cap on? No, I did not. All right, I'm sorry I was kind of up there out of the camera way, but you can see here how I have these. These actually don't look like they're even made for these. They look too small, but I kind of like the look of that. I'm kind of digging it, so. Um, so with that, and what do I want to put on the bottom? Do I want Pearl Rondell that? I want to make sure I have enough beads for my other one as well. Let's do another champagne bead because I do like to, I wanna, want that to kind of go back to this necklace. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna want this loop like this because I'm gonna hook a jump ring and I want my jump ring to sit like this so I can run my sorry silk through it. So we're gonna make a loop, turn this over and I'm gonna hold my loop this way. And, and you can always adjust them, but if I can do it how I want to do it, the first go around, that's what I do. So basically you can see that's up and down, so I know I need to, to bend my wire this way so I can make one that faces forward, okay? And around those, I just did my L. Oops, spinning a little bit, guys. And we're just going to do another loop. now. Before we decide, um, before we finish this, excuse me, we want to, after we make that loop, we want to open it up, hook our link into it, grab it, close it with your chin nose or tweezer or whatever pliers, and then we're just going to wrap back up. And I'm going to wrap a little bit down as well because I like the way that looks at the bottom there see how that thick thick wrap looks really cute all right so we're just going to trim that and then on this side i'll do the other one here in just a minute i'm going to find my eight millimeter jump rings in gold and that is what i'm going to use to hook in to the link and to run my sorry silk through because that'll be i should be able to get it through an eight millimeter and it won't be ungodly large so let's let's see how that'll work so i'm going to go ahead and just put my jump ring so we have this one sideways this one's forward get everything kind of straighten straighten the link make sure everything There we go. And I'm just gonna hook in my jump ring. And then I know all I have to do is attach my sorry silk from here. Okay, so that is that side. I'll just get another jump ring out because I know I'm gonna be needing it. And another piece of wire. And this is German wire. You can use para wire. You can use whatever wire, artistic wire, whatever you prefer. And this, these pieces I'm cutting are about 10 inches, but I just kind of eyeball it. And I always usually get, I can't say always, but I usually get more than I need. 
but I'd rather have that than not enough, that's for sure. Okay, so we're gonna do our L first and make our wrapped loop. And I won't walk you through this again verbally, but you can see how I'm gonna be doing it up and over. And go. Right. So this is going to be our part that we hook into our jump ring. Guys, if you don't want <coughs> to hook into a jump ring, you certainly do not have to. I think I'm going to give myself one more time around here on this, though. Um, you can just make your loops on your wire uh, larger when you do your wrap loops, if that's what you prefer. I do like to use the jump rings mostly because, again, it's going to give you that flow and it's not going to be stiff and tight because the wire is just holding it there. You know, it'll have a little bit of movement to it. And I'm just closing the end down on that where I ended that. All right. So this is going to be the top. So we want to start with our pearl, just like we did over here. Our rondelle. <coughs> Losing my voice. Like I said, this is my sixth video that I'm filming today. So bear with me. And big cap like that yeah guys I mean keep in mind you don't have to use bead caps that perfectly fit them I mean that just gives you a whole different look sitting like that so it's to each their own for sure but and then our we're gonna put our champagne bead on there <coughs> So that's going to be the top. So we're going to bend this one. The top. That. So let's do our L. Okay. So what we made our L here and we're going to do a up and over and across. And we're going to open this jump ring up. Don't forget that part. I do it so, so many times, guys. And I want to kick myself. I don't link it into what I want to link it to before I start wrapping it. So that's a that's a common thing, I think, <laughs> with um, jewelry makers. Sometimes we do that. So, And I'm just taking that wire down again, making that thicker bottom on it. Because I like the look of it. Another thing, if you had enough wire, if you wanted to wrap up and put the wrapped wire around the, the beach, you certainly could, um, just to each their own for sure. All right, so there. And also guys, if you have not tried these tweezer pliers by Zeron, I swear by them for wire work anyway. I love them for wire work. But I have friends that do all kinds of stuff and they, I've, I've gifted two of my friends um, these uh, particular tweezer pliers and they don't keep telling me they don't know how they lived without <laughs> having them before so and I'm just putting on my jump ring just like I did on the other side and grab my chain nose here there you go all right so I'm gonna clear what's left of these beads I cleaned those up pretty good and my necklace or my wire pieces excuse me I'm going to close my jump rings because I'm famous for knocking jump rings over and spilling them everywhere all right so now basically we have to decide how we're going to link in our sorry silk okay so here's our sorry silk now guys you don't have to use sorry silk because I know this gives you kind of a to me it looks like a romantic look but to eat your own if you want to use chain you can finish it with chain you can use leather you could use fairy silk you could use any cording that you desire that's for sure but this is what I want to use so that's what we're using and see and I like these pieces 
on here I think they're super cool now this one is loose on here so if it's attached I'm good with it if it's loose see I'll just pull that and then that gives us some shred there I like the look of that so I think what I'm going to do here is I cut this in half so we have two even pieces and I can see here that there was a tie-in on this piece so I'm gonna cut myself another piece because I don't like the way that looks of course I could just cut them to that size that would be fine I think that would be enough let's see I'm gonna measure it here that will give us tw about 12 inches that should be enough so we can just snip this one down we're gonna snip this here and then snip that one yeah, I buy the sorry silk on the skeins, so it sometimes has where they tie them together, and it looks cute on certain pieces. I just did not want that on this one. So what we're gonna do here, guys, is I'm just gonna do the old standby, where we thread it through and then wire wrap it, because I like the look of that. So I just cut myself some more 20 gauge. And I'm going to make my life difficult by using German wire, but it's okay. It's just a little stiffer. It'll still work fine. But if you're a newbie, I recommend using like an artistic wire or something to wrap in your, to connect in your, um, sorry, silk. So I make sure this is all laying how I want it. So I need this turn that way. And that way then you have your loop where you need it nope this sometimes takes a little bit of fiddling but is that how I want it no I want it this way so you want it to be laying that way guys I'm just gonna feed the end of my sorry silk through fold up just a little piece here and then I'm just going to wrap some wire around it to link it in to my piece Okay, and this is the same way that I've always showed you to wrap. You're going to want to put a nice size end here to give you some leverage and you're just going to wrap your first loop around and you're going to tighten the piece that's sticking out and the piece that is wrapped around so you get a good start there. And then you just do a few more wraps or however many you want. You can make this as minimal or as... Um, you know, or, you know, I can't find the word, but you can make it so it sh sticks out more. And what that means is I wrap more times around it to just give it a little bit bulkier of a look. Personally, most pieces, that's what I like. But again, it's all up to you guys. And this is stiffening up on me. So that's why I'm saying to you guys, use some sort of copper wire or a, th a thinner gauge you know but this is just what I had here it's 20 gauge and it's and it's doing all right if you're not a um, wire wrapper in general though like I said I would your fingers won't be kind of as toughened up as mine so do your um, fingers a favor there and I'm just snipping these all right and then I'm gonna push this end down. Simp a little bit more off that. And there we go. There's one side. Okay, and that's linked in nicely. And now let's go to the other side. Cut myself another piece of wire. We're gonna do the same exact thing okay and again I'm gonna make sure everything's sitting how I want it to be sitting and I want my loop to be forward sorry that's off camera guys same idea and we're gonna feed our sorry silk end through fold it over I just want a small fold but if you want longer pieces you can certainly pull more through and have your pieces hang more today this is what I'm doing with this piece I just want a little bit through 
So I'm kind of going to compare these and see how I'm sitting for, yep, just need to take it down just a smidge. And we are right on track. All right. So let's take our wire and do the same thing, lay it across, wrap it around first time here and snug down with both wires just kind of push it down in there let me see how much I have sticking up I don't want to go too much higher than that because I like to have a little piece hanging out the bottom or up the top I guess in this instance and we're just wrapping and again we're just doing um, some wraps just to get it so it's uniform and it looks nice do some even wraps there Okay, let's see how we're comparing. We're pretty good. I think that's a good place to stop. And I just keep looking at them as I go to see, is this close? Is this close? Do I have this much out? Do I have, you know, as you go. And basically, there's that. And then we're just going to trim off our starting wire here. Go up close, trim that off. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that up in here so we don't have any scratchies. And that is it, guys. That's all she wrote. I'm going to tie this in a little bow, and that is how it is going to be attached to the neck. Like so. And then you have a really pretty, let me zoom out just a hair for you here. Excuse me. Sorry. Um you have a really pretty romantic necklace you know that super pretty you know super romantic if you're into that this will be a beautiful piece and then like I said it'll coordinate with the earrings that we made in my other video so if this is something that um, style that you like you could get the same exact beads and do the same exact thing as I did um, or you could pick out a different mix two different mixes this is a, a strand as well as part of the color trends bead mix in rose gold so just so you know and we just only thing I added were some jump rings and head pins and um, some wire basically you know in our little wire guardians so I hope you guys enjoyed this I, I love doing designs on the fly because I never know what I'm gonna come up with and I, I learn as well as I hope that you learn as we go. So, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for uh, checking my video out. And as always, my affiliate links are in the description. If you are able to use those, it's much appreciated. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps me out. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.